So now I'd like to introduce our next speaker, my colleague Susanna, who will talk about another European program called the Mary Skodowska Curie Actions. This is a comprehensive program that covers pre-docs, post-docs, uh, all stages of a researcher's career. So, so pay close attention because I think there's a lot of opportunity in here for Thai researchers and Thai, many Thai researchers have had success with this program. Susanna? Yeah. Okay. Yes, thank you very much, Simon, for introducing me. I'm introducing another program that uh, we think is very exciting for you. There we go. Okay. And particularly because of the question the young gentleman asked earlier on, the Marie Sklodowska career actions also offer the opportunity to do PhDs in Europe, and I think this is why maybe you would want to pay particular attention. This is a program that all builds on mobility. Mobility is the key, and we think it is more than just uh, a program that allows you research to gain your research uh, experience, but it's really a comprehensive program that looks at the career development of researchers. The program uh, pursues a bottom-up approach, and we think this is why it is particularly attractive for researchers. That means there are no specific calls with a specific theme, but it is up to the individual researcher to identify a research project to make your idea happen. It is uh, all about mobility, mobility not only between countries, between Europe, within Europe, and also, of course, uh, between Europe and, uh, for example, Southeast Asia, but it also allows for intersectoral mobility. That means uh, it gives you, for example, an opportunity to work as part of your research project with a company, with an NGO, with an institution in a different sector. Sorry. So, sorry, I'm, I'm reading this and clicking, so I'm getting a little confused myself. Apologize. The program really, um, I need to go back here. Sorry. Who, where, and what can you do? The program addresses researchers of all levels of research experience, so from people that want to obtain their PhD up to very senior researchers. As I said, all areas of research are covered. It is a bottom-up approach. It is up to you to come up with an idea and then turn it into a research proposal. And mobility is uh, anywhere in the 28 EU member states and the 13-odd associated countries that we have where you can spend your time as a researcher. It is a fantastic program that allows you to undertake research uh, in Europe in one of the leading labs that we have. Uh, this is the same as the ERC program, a very, very prestigious program. It really opens doors for your future career as a researcher. And I think this needs to be stressed as well. The working conditions as a Marie Curie Fellow are excellent. Um, it also gives you the opportunity, as I mentioned before, to um, be mobile, not you move from academia outside, make, for example, um, to business, to, the, uh, to industry. Uh, we also have programs that offer the short-term exchange, not only for researchers, but also, for example, for members of your labs or people that work in the research administration. I'll talk about the programs in a minute. And, and I think this is important as well for you, this is about mobility. There are also opportunities for you to bring over a European researcher to work with you here in Thailand at no cost to yourself as part of the individual fellowships, which I'll mention uh, in a minute. So these are the programs. You can see we have the Marie Sklodowska Career Actions has basically four pillars, each addressing researchers at a different stage in their career development. The innovative trading networks offer the opportunity for you to pursue your PhD in Europe. The individual fellowships are addressing postdoctoral researchers. That gives you an opportunity to move over there to enhance your research expertise, but also to acquire interdisciplinary skills that are important for your future career. And under this program, you can also bring over a European researcher to work with you here in Thailand, for example. 
The RISE program, which I think is, is very uh, exciting, we had a very good success rate under the previous call of about 25%, so this is something you should consider. This is if you already have a European partner that you work with in Europe, or ideally a few European partners, and you want to deepen that uh, collaboration with them, that gives you an opportunity to exchange staff not only from the academic side, but also your technical staff or your research administrators. And then under the co-fund project, there are also opportunities for PhDs and postdocs. Now, which action is the one that is most suitable to you? The actions are divided really in two parts. The one side addresses researchers who do not yet have a PhD and the other ones address people that have acquired their PhD or they have the equivalent of about four years of research experience. So it falls into two categories and you will have to decide which one you fall in. The one that uh, we think is very exciting and I look around the room, I would assume that applies to most of the audience members here today. These are the individual fellowships, so the postdoctoral opportunities that you can do as an acquiring your own individual fellowship or also applying through the co-fund mechanism. The individual fellowships address postdoctoral candidates. That means you need to have a PhD or you must have four years of research experience at the time of the call deadline. And what is very important about this call is you need to develop your research proposal and your application together with a European host. That means you don't uh, develop something and then afterwards you approach someone in Europe and say, are you interested in this? But you really need to identify a host institution, a person that you want to work with, and together with this person, develop your research project and together with this person, submit your application. That is very important. We understand that this is often the key hurdle for applicants outside of Europe, and this is where Euraxis also comes in to help you identify these people that could be potential partners and hosts for you. The individual fellowships offer the opportunity for you to spend up to two years in Europe, so you're going to Europe, but at the same time it also offers the opportunity for you to attract European fellows to come and spend time here with you at your labs or research institutes in Thailand. So two-way mobility is uh, very important. And these are the countries um, that are part of this program. So research, you could either go to any of these countries and work there or you could also try to hire someone from any of these countries that are EU members or so-called associated countries. This, I think, is uh, interesting to you as well. This is uh, the financial dimension. It is a very attractive research program, a fellowship program. It will allow you to very comfortably focus on your research uh, project. I did not put in a slide here on uh, evaluation. The evaluation is basically focused on three criteria. That is innovation, impact, and implementation. And I think similar to the ERC, innovation is what is important. It needs to be an idea that pushes the frontiers of knowledge. Impact is very important, which means we want to know how this research project is changing things. And we also want to see how you're implementing your research idea. There's an overall threshold of 70%, so you need to score highly in all three of these criteria. I'm mentioning this here because we very often see very good ideas, um, but then we have uh, problems with the, implement, uh, the impact um, criterion. So this is something that you would need to um, spend some time considering. The call for this fellowship is currently open. The deadline is the 14th of September, and the application is all online. You can look at all the details pertaining to this call and how to apply on the participant portal of Horizon 2020. But of course, we are here to also give you guidance 
if you need some. There are also opportunities for postdoc positions under the so-called co-fund actions. In these cases, you just apply for positions that are advertised, and of course, the source for you to look for these positions is the Euraxis Jobs Portal that Simon has just introduced. So there will be very specific um, research topics already, and then you could see whether that fits your profile and apply for one of these positions that are uh, extremely uh, lucrative, I think fin financially, but also in, in the sense of the social security uh, that you obtain. As I mentioned, uh, the Marie Curie actions address not only postdoctoral researchers, but also junior researchers, researchers that are hoping to uh, obtain a PhD. For these, you can apply for a position in a program. This can either be the so-called innovative training networks. These are networks of several European partners in Europe that focus on, of course, equipping the candidates with research skills and giving them the opportunity to uh, pursue scientific excellence, but they also equip you with interdisciplinary skills that are very important for your um, future research career. So these positions are advertised also on the Euraxis jobs portal or, or on the Marie Curie uh, website. And the program that I mentioned previously that uh, we think is very important for researchers out here in ASEAN and in Thailand is the RISE program. The RISE program is uh, an opportunity for you to deepen uh, a partnership that you already have with European universities, European research partners. It gives you an opportunity to uh, exchange staff, not only academic staff, but also, as I said, technical staff or research administrators, um, meaning that you would be able to send your researchers out to Europe, but you would also host your partners here in Thailand. It is a great opportunity for you to uh, expand your network and maybe together uh, work on, uh, on, on a research proposal, for example, for Horizon 2020 calls. It's a great opportunity as a first step to enhance your network and then go on to further research collaborations with European partners. The next RISE call will open on the 1st of December which in a way is ideal. It gives you time to prepare your research proposal together with your European partners, of course, and then the deadline will be uh, in the, on the 5th of April. So it's just the right time um, to prepare this well. As we said, the previous call, its success rate was 25%, so it's, that was a very good outcome. Um, so far, we don't have so many successful RISE applications from ASEAN, really only a handful, and we hope that you will use this opportunity a lot more to enhance your research networks. There is a lot, a lot of information out there on how to go about applying for this. There's lots of uh, websites, of course. The first one, of course, would be the Marie Sklodowska Curry Actions website itself. You have a Facebook presence. The participant portal is your first site that you go to when you look at all the call details, the terms of conditions, the deadlines, etc. But of course, Simon and I are here on a permanent basis in ASEAN, and we're always very keen to receive your queries so that we can sit down with you and, and give you some guidance on how to make sure that your proposal uh, has the best chances of success. We also have a roundtable discussion later as part of the program, and we will have some Marie Curie fellows on that panel. Um, some of them might already be here in the audience, and I'm sure they will also be very keen to give you some first-hand advice on how to make sure that your proposal is successful. And with this, I thank you very much. Thanks. Do you want to stay for a question? Yeah. Just um, As you can see, this is a program that, 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 that you know, covers all stages of a researcher's career. Has, has the mobility element built into it. Um, it, it. There have been a number of successful applications from Thailand, so, so you know, it can be done. Um, so please take a close look at it. Any, any questions? 
Yes. Oh. Yeah, I was just going to say. Yeah, we will post all the presentations from today on the Euraxis website, so we'll get those up as soon as we can. They'll all be there. Okay. Sure. Um, thank you very much for your chance. Uh, I'm really curious with the uh, ITN programs, and I read it in the brochure. You have an uh, industrial doctorate and joint doctorates. So I would like to know a little bit more about uh, industrial doctorate. Uh, do I need uh, more experience in work in industry before I apply uh, instead of uh, research experience, yeah, uh, because it it's like uh, it has different uh, term, yeah, and and the second questions uh, you mentioned about the internships with the research company and NGO in Europe, um, which one which program that uh, accommodate uh, this internship? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, maybe the second question first. I think the first one maybe Simon can answer better than me. You're referring to the secondment. As part of the individual fellowships, you have an opportunity to spend part of your research time in Europe, not only with a with an academic uh, outfit, with a university, for example, but you can also spend some of that time, for example, in an industry, in, a, in some company that conducts research in your field. That is the secondment option. Mm -hmm. And that applies to the postdoctoral level in this case, the individual fellowships. Mm -hmm. The industrial PhD, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think you need to have experience of uh, in industry. It just basically mean, gives you an applied uh, angle. It is an extra opportunity uh, for you to kind of already make that, uh, make that move uh, between academia and industry and, and do a, a more applied PhD. But you don't need to have that in your in your record as long as you fulfill the uh, application requirements in terms of your academic credentials. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and, and these, any, any of these sort of industrial doctorate opportunities and so on, they'll be posted both on the Marie Curie site but also through the Euraxis Jobs Portal. So you need to check that regularly to see which, which doctorates are coming up and each of those will have, have their own eligibility criteria. Um, so something else I can say is that the, the individual fellowship call, this is the one that is an opportunity for you to go spend up to two years in Europe. Uh, that call is open now. We've already run a couple of, of, of dedicated workshops on that call. We'll be running some more. Uh, so we'll keep you informed of that. Likewise for the RISE call, which is, this is the one which is, it's not for the individual, it's institutions that partner you build a network of institutions, and within that network, you can move researchers, you can move research administration staff for different secondment periods, three months, six months, a year. And we'll, uh, a little bit in another couple of months, we'll start running some workshops purely focused on that call. Because as Susanna said, the success rate is very high. If you already have a network in Europe, it's an excellent opportunity to strengthen that network by, by coming together with the support of the European Commission, financial support, and then can move personnel uh, research personnel, research administration personnel within that within that network. Any other questions? Ah. Mm-hmm. 
No, you're perfectly right. And I think this is one of the, the real challenges that you'll have, in that you have a full-time position which you want to keep, and as part of that position, you have commitments and your, and, your, and your employer will expect you to be there doing your job. Now, one of the things which when the, as I said, the ERC, the schemes are designed by researchers like you, who've all gone through the same frustration that you have, that I'd like to be able to apply for this, but it's not compatible with my job. So we've tried to, they've tried to make the ERC schemes as flexible as possible. So when we say 50% time commitment, that's 50% over the five years. So it may be possible for you to negotiate a one-year secondment and be one year full-time, and then for the rest of the time have a lower percentage than 50%. So it's 50% over the full five years. And that may be more possible than rather than having to go backwards and forwards and doing six months here and six months there, which doesn't fit into your teaching schedules, doesn't fit into your maybe the institutional requirements that you have. But it may be possible for you to get a longer term secondment once in that period and then I have some shorter periods. So it's 50% over the five years in the terms of our grants. For the Marie Curie grants, they're designed to be much more full time positions apart from the, the short term uh, placements through RISE, which could also be. More, more, more suitable for, for you as well. And so I think it's probably the RISE scheme and the, the ERC schemes which are the best designed for people who are at the stage of their, of their professional career that, that you are. Yeah, thanks, Martin. Yeah, just to add, again, I think this is one of the, on the RISE program that, that you know, as part of your proposal, you really decide uh, who spends what time, what length of time in Europe. And, and you've, you know, within a four-year project, you've got 540 months of secondment time. So you can divide that up. So you as a full-time lecturer may choose only to go for a month, and somebody else may go for six months. Or so you can, that's the flexibility within that, within that particular call. I was also going to say that you know, later today, you'll also hear some of the national programs, which, which also have, have, have shorter, you know, shorter uh, stays available within Europe. It's not just two years full-time at an institution in Europe. That's the individual fellowships. Yes. Um, thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kalpana Giri. Um, I come from Nepal, but right now I'm working with the Stockholm Environment Institute, which is based in Asia, like the Asia Center of the Stockholm Environment Institute. Uh, we actually work with uh, NGOs and academia to promote environmental issues and uh, promote rethinking development in the context of environment and climate change. Uh, so I think I have uh, two questions. The first is very much related to one of the colleagues who already raised the question is, since there is an emphasis on an individual researcher uh, for this call, how does that link with the overall institutional aim to do and promote research. Because sometimes um, there's also a likely chance that we may lose researchers because of these opportunities. Um, so how to tackle that? That's first. The second is, um, since, it, since this is uh, an ASEAN forum as well, so what type of calls would actually tailor to uh, doing an interdisciplinary research across ASEAN? Uh, is there any platform that particularly, you know, like tackles that type of need? Thank you. Sorry, the second question is that you're uh, looking for mobility opportunities within intra-ASEAN. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there are, yes. but uh, of course this is not our mandate. We're looking at uh, EU ASEAN mobility. Um, there might be some funds, I think, under the ASEAN uni network uh, which we are happy to pass on information we just met some colleagues in hanoi about that but uh, under this scheme you know the mobility will have to be between europe and asean okay but within that context of europe and asean can we do like multi countries approach
Great, thank you. Thank you.